welcome viewers welcome to the new lesson from dr arts biology if you did not subscribe the channel you can just click on the subscribe button and bell icon welcome students we are just moving into the metabolism of carbohydrate okay the first one glycolysis before going into details of each and every steps in glycolysis you have to just watch the briefing of glycolysis and what is happening there and which are the site etc and first of all you watch that particular thing so you can just start here and then we will just go into details of each and every step okay it is better to brief the entire process of glycolysis first before going into details of the individual steps in glycolysis so let us see what is happening within the glycolysis glycolysis is a process of breakdown of glucose within the cytoplasm of the cell into two pyruvate utilizing two atp molecules and with the concomitant release of four atp and two nadh plus h plus molecules we can see that it is the first level of energy deriving catabolism in all the living organisms from prokaryotes to eukaryotes as the glycolysis can proceed in presence or absence of oxygen we cannot restrict it to aerobic or anaerobic respiration the chemical pathway in glycolysis was described by empton mayerhof and parnas it is otherwise known as empton mayerhof parnas pathway or emp pathway in respect of them in aerobic organisms glycolysis results in the release of energy equal to 7 atp and in anaerobic organism energy equal to 2 atp here 7 atp came from the 5 is actually resulting from the nadh plus h plus that is released each nadh plus h plus will be contributing 2.5 atp molecule as the two molecules of nadh plus h plus are formed it will be resulting in the formation of 5 atp molecules glycolysis is completed in 10 steps catalyzed by different enzymes belongs to the classes such as transferase isomerase dehydrogenase and lyase we can see that the glycolysis will be completed in three stages were in the first stage trapping of glucose and its conversion to readily cleavable form happens utilizing energy in the second stage cleavage to 2 3 carbon sugar and in the third stage energy harvesting through the conversion of it into two pyruvate molecules so in this figure we can see what is actually happening within the glycolysis in the first step glucose will be converted into glucose 6 phosphate by the enzyme by hexokinase it will be utilizing one atp molecule where one atp is converted into adp molecule in the second step glucose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate utilizing or catalyzed by the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase and in the third step the fructose 6 phosphate is again phosphorylated to fructose 16 bisphosphate utilizing one more atp where an adp molecule will be released and this is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphofructokinase now by this particular step the stage 1 will be completed in stage 2 this fructose 16 bisphosphate is cleaved into glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate it is done by the enzyme aldolase now the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is again converted back to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or isomerized to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate with the help of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase now coming to the third stage the first first reaction of the third stage is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is 
actually oxidatively phosphorylated into 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate where 2 NAD plus molecules will be released back to 2 NADH plus H plus and 2 orthophosphate will be utilized. This is done by the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Now, this particular 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted or dephosphorylated to 3 phosphoglycerate, releasing 2 ATP molecules. Here, the entire number is 2 because we can see that in the stage 2, 2 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is formed. Now, the 3 phosphoglycerate is converted to 2 phosphoglycerate by the action of a mutase enzyme, which is a kind of isomerase. And this 2 phosphoglycerate is further converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by the action of enolase enzyme, which is a kind of lyase category of enzyme. And in the final step, step 10, phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate where ADP, two more ATP molecules will be released. So finally we can see that uh, there is a release of 2 NADH plus H plus in the 6th step and release of 2 ATP in the 7th step and release of 2 ATP in the 10th step. Thus a total of 4 plus 2 into 2.55 that is 9 ATP is released. But as the 2 ATP is consumed in the first and the third reaction, the net energy is nothing but the 7 ATP. And also, if anaerobic metabolism is there, only 2 ATP will be net. Only if aerobic mechanism proceeds, it will be 7 ATP. Now, let us see the details of glycolysis. Okay, then. we can see that the glycolysis is actually completing in three stages. So, it is composed of three stages. What are the stages? Stage 1 is actually the trapping of glucose and the conversion of that product into a readily cleavable form. Okay, so the first stage is actually the trapping and conversion to cleavable form, to breakable form. Okay, that is the first stage. Here, the glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then it is converted to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate up to these particular steps. So, this particular stage 1 include 3 steps. Okay. Now, the stage 2 is there. In stage 2, what is happening? Actually, as I told you in the first stage, it is converted into cleavable form, breakable form. So, that cleaving is happening in stage 2. So, okay. So, it is a cleavage. So, the breaking is happening where fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is converted to 2,3-carbon compound. What are they? Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. That process is happening in stage 2. In addition to that, the one more step where this glycerol dihydroxyacetone phosphate is again converted to glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate. That means ultimately in stage 2, two molecules of glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate is formed. Now, in the third stage, stage 3, what's happening? It is actually the capturing of energy, derivation of energy from the glucose. Okay, so in that step, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to pyruvate and where releasing of energy will be happening. So these are the three stages in 
glycolysis. So glycolysis happens at three stages. First one is a trapping and conversion to cleavable form. Second one is the cleavage and third one is the derivation of energy from the compound. Okay, now let us see the details of each and every step in glycolysis one by one. There are about 10 steps. So this one is having two steps. Stage 2 is having two steps and the stage 3 is having five steps. So a total of 10 steps are there, 10 reactions are there in glycolysis. So we are just moving into the first step now. Okay, make sure that you are writing this. Then only you are just going to the details. Okay. So let us see the first step. That is the trapping of glucose. We know that glucose can move into and out of the cell with the help of glucose transporter. And you may know about the GLUT1, GLUT2, etc. That are the GLUT trans the glucose transporters through which glucose can easily move. Therefore, the glucose inside the cell, there is a chance for escaping from the cell. The glucose can escape from the cell through these glucose transporters. We have to avoid that to derive energy from glucose through glycolysis and further oxidative oxidation steps. Okay, so for that purpose, glucose is converted into a molecule which cannot cross through the plasma membrane through the glucose transporter. That is the first step. So we can see the first step. So step one. That is the first process in the stage one. So step one is nothing but the conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, in briefing you have learned about it. So what will be happening? Here phosphate group is added. From where this phosphate group is coming? From ATP only. So ATP will be hydrolyzed to ADP. Dephosphorylation happened to ATP. And we have learned about the enzyme in enzyme classes. This is a transferase class of enzyme. And what is the name of that particular enzyme? Exokinase. Exokinase is the enzyme which is actually catalyzing this particular reaction. This particular enzyme can work only in presence of divalent cations. Therefore, Mn2 plus or Mg2 plus will be the either Mn2 plus or Mg2 plus will be the to form this to proceed this particular reaction. And uh, make sure that this particular molecule is actually may, forming a complex with uh, this ATP molecule to make that reaction easier. Okay, so this is the step. Now this glucose 6-phosphate cannot escape out of the cell. So let us see the structure. You have to learn the metabolism part uh, with the structural details. Your syllabus is saying like that. So you have to learn the structure. Don't worry about the structure. It is simple only. Make sure that you are following me exactly. Then the structure, all the structures will be easy for you to draw and remember. Okay. So let us see the glucose first. We know that the glucose will be always in the ring structure form. And for all these reactions that is happening, first the enzyme will be just uh, remove the ring structure and it will be converting it into the linear form and then it will be added. Okay, so first is the just the breaking of the ring form into linear form. Okay, so I'm not representing that things there. I'm just converting the glucose into glucose 6 phosphate. So let us see that the glucose is the okay H O H H O H O H H then H sorry H O H H C H two O H 
this particular molecule is irreversibly so this particular reaction is irreversible that means you cannot freely convert glucose 6 phosphate back to the glucose so this is one of the rate determining steps in glycolysis what is mean by rate determining steps the step which determines the speed of glycolysis the direction in which glycolysis is happening so this is one of the step. There are three reversible reactions in glycolysis. You will get three more question from them or two more question. What are the three? The first one is this. We will be just seeing the remaining. So there are three irreversible steps. Okay. So this is one of the rate determining step. This is a irreversible step. So it will be irreversibly converting into the glucose 6 phosphate. H O H O H H H O H H O H H C H two okay C H two O P O three two minus O P O three two minus were the ATP is converted to ADP and that phosphate is added. Make sure that you are drawing with the two different colors so that you will understand the reactions well from where this atom is coming and attaching to that particular position etc. You can learn it exactly the same when you are doing it with the different colors. Okay, so make sure that you are just repeating and there X or Y is here every day. Clear? So that's about the first step. It is the reversible reaction. It is actually trapping the glucose and preventing the glucose from escaping from the cytoplasm because glute can transport only glucose in glucose form. If anything is added, it, it cannot transport. So glucose is trapped inside the cytoplasm. Clear? Now let us move to the step two. Step 2. Step 2 is an isomerization reaction. We know the class of enzyme isomerase. Okay, so now the name that we are just telling here will actually represent the isomerase class. Okay, what is the phosphate group is the glucose is the okay and then it is converted into phosphate containing fructose. That is the step we can see here. So glucose 6 phosphate, I'm just making glucose 6 phosphate as like this. Okay, as we already mentioned the full name here. And this one will be converted into fructose 6 phosphate. Fructose 6 phosphate. This particular reaction is actually a reversible reaction. Okay, we can just either convert fructose 6-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate and uh, uh, glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. So it's a reversible reaction. So this is just an enzyme. What is the enzyme catalyzing? Isomerase. What kind of isomerase? It can be phosphofructoisomerase or phosphoglucoisomerase. Okay, so isomerase, I am just writing isomerase only. Okay, the phosphoglucose isomerase will be converting glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. So I am just representing this particular figure here. The diagram I am just representing here, or the structure I am just representing there. So make sure that you are continuously drawing from top to down. Okay, that will be easier for you. So isomerase and the name should be the this here we can see the one that I have mentioned at the first stage where there will be just conversion of the ring structure into linear structure and converting it into the isomeric form the fructose 6 phosphate 
I'm just writing the ring structure only, but in between that step is there, you have to make sure. Okay, you don't have to draw it, instead in your mind it should be there that the ring structure is converted into linear, then isomerization and then again back to the ring structure. So, we know the structure of rectus like this. So, it's a furanose ring. CH2OH, OH, OH, H, H, OH, CH2, H, and what is the O, P, O, O, P, O, 3, 2 minus. Okay, so that is fructose 6 phosphate. Clear? Now, this fructose 6 phosphate will be, we have learned that the, the stage 1 is actually doing what? First one is trapping and second one is conversion into readily cleavable form. So, in the next step, the fructose 6 phosphate is converted into a readily cleavable form from where the cleaving results in 2 3 carbon sugars. Okay, so that is nothing but the conversion of fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. So, in the next step, I'm just writing here. Okay, you have to make it down. I'm just taking the opposite direction. Make sure you are writing it down. Okay, don't. As I don't have enough space there, I'm just write, writing on top. But you have to make sure that you are writing down only. So, fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. Okay, I'm writing bisphosphate. Bisphosphate. And there is another term that is nothing but diphosphate. As you are learning in ADP, it is diphosphate. It contains two phosphate group. Here I am just writing bisphosphate, even though it is containing two phosphate group. Now what is the difference between bisphosphate and diphosphate? It is nothing but if the two phosphate group present in a molecule is attached to the same position. It is known as the diphosphate. If it is attached to the different position, it will be known as the bisphosphate. So here we can see that the phosphate group present is attached to the first carbon and the sixth carbon. So it is bisphosphate. In ADP, we can see that two phosphate group attached is on the same carbon of the ribose sugar that is nothing but the fifth carbon. So it is diphosphate. Clear? Hope you understood the difference between bisphosphate and the diphosphate. Make sure that you are writing it as the bisphosphate. Even though some textbook will be saying the diphosphate itself. It's okay only but exactly speaking you have to mention like a bisphosphate. Because it is at a different position. Clear? Now let us see the structure. So one more phosphate group is added. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't do that conversion. So we have to mention the ATP hydrolysis into ADP. So ATP. Okay, ATP is converted into ADP. And uh, what will be the, the same MN2 plus or MG2 plus is required. Okay. And uh, what is the enzyme that is catalyzing this particular reaction? It is phosphofructokinase. Why? It is actually adding phosphate group to the Phosphofructose, the one fructose which already contain a particular fructose, the uh, phosphate group. So it is phosphofructokinase. Kinase is the enzyme where you can see the reaction where phosphate group is added to any molecule. So kinase actually catalyzes the reaction of additional phosphate group. Okay, so this particular conversion, so phosphofructokinase. Phosphofructokinase and this also will be in presence of Mn2 plus or Mg2 plus. You have to keep in mind that this is the second 
irreversible reaction and this is the first irreversible reaction so it is a second rate determining steps in glycolysis okay so let us see the structure now the same thing so you have to mention the aromat with the the single aromat because it is irreversible reaction make sure that you have done it i am just erasing so that i can draw the figure here okay o the structure is here so what is the the entire thing will be same only ch2 oh 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 h h oh h c h2 now what work it is added to first and the last already in the sixth one it is there so we have to just add uh, this one o p o 3 2 minus here also we have to add o p o 3 2 minus now it becomes the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate so here ends the First stage of glycolysis were trapping and the conversion to cleavable foam happened. Okay, so hope you understood the structure and where it comes, where it added, etc. Whatever we are writing in this description part, you have to repeat the. Don't forget that. And when you are getting question for essay glycolysis, you have to mention with the structure name and the structure should be there. Then only you will be getting the full mark. So as per your syllabus, stru syllabus structure is needed. Okay, let us move to the next stage that is stage 2 where cleavage and interconversion of 3 carbon sugar happens. Okay, so I am just erasing, make sure that uh, you have done all these things. Okay, I am just pausing here, you can just pause the video and draw in their structure. Okay, moving to the stage. Moving to the stage. So we have just covered the first three steps of glycolysis. Now I am just moving to the stage two. Okay, stage two and step step four. Right? We can just write it as a normal number. Step four. So. From here onwards, you have to be clear that uh, I am just changing the ring form of fructose into the chain structure, linear structure. Okay, I am just converting it into the linear structure. Okay, so what is there on the first? Uh, you can see CH two O CH two O P O three two minus okay and then what happens c double bond o then c h o h okay sorry c o h h so first three carbon now i'm just representing this remaining with the another color because we can just see the splitting how it is happening so now C H O H C H O H C Let us see what happens here C H O H H 2 O H So this is actually the fractals now this part will be forming one thing and uh, this one will be forming one thing. For understanding that, I am just writing, I am just picking this particular hydrogen. Okay, that will be added into this particular molecule and the remaining will be exactly same. And this one will be forming. So if this H is lost, what will happen? CHO, it becomes a aldehyde sugar so i'm just representing this h also with the blue letter 
so that you will understand that this hydrogen is actually moving into this carbon to form CH2OH for the third carbon of dihydroxy acetone. Okay, so we can just see here, this will be just moving. So splitting is happening. Okay, I'm just writing in this way. And this one happen in the reverse fashion also. Okay, in the reverse fashion also this particular reaction can happen. With splitting is happening. What is happening? This hydrogen is moving into this particular region. So let us see the dihydroxy acetone. CH2 OPO3 will be adding later. C double bond O C H H O H okay now this particular thing C H double bond O you can see one hydrogen is left so oxygen will be sharing this bond with this carbon this bond is breaking as part of the cleavage C H O H C H H O H so this one is actually, so let us see the O, so this, uh, I forget, we have to add this one also, O, P, O, 3, 2, minus, okay, we have also O, P, O, 3, 2, minus, don't forget that, because it is fructose 1, 6, this phosphate, okay, so this one is fructose 1, 6, this phosphate, and this one is dihydroxy acetone phosphate. I'm not writing the full name because we have already discussed in carbohydrate dihydroxy acetone and all. And this one is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And their structure and their carbohydrate structure we have already discussed. So that's why I'm making it short. DHLP and the G3P. Now what happens next? I told you in the first itself. There are two steps in the stage. First one is the conversion of cleavage and second one is the interconversion. So this dihydroxy acetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate should be interconverted. Okay. So this step will be happening like this. This just interconversion will be happening. And this will be catalyzed by the enzyme triose isomerase. triose isomerase. Now the question is how that interconversion will be happening? How this particular thing will be happening? That is the question. CH2OPO3 to minus. It's so simple. I'm just seeing it like this. This hydrogen and this hydrogen these two hydrogen will be moving away from the and it will be added at the second carbon. When this hydrogen is added to this oxygen, this double bond is lost. And then the carbon will be sharing that bond with the hydrogen that is leaving from here. So this hydrogen and this hydrogen are actually the one which is converting these two into the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So I am just marking that under the red line and we are just representing that also in this way. Okay, so that you will understand from where it came and how it was happening. Okay, so it is just rotated. So that is what this is. So glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Now, what is this particular enzyme? It is actually aldolase enzyme. Now the question is, aldolase belongs to which class of enzyme? Splitting is happening. We have learned about splitting only in hydrolysis. But you cannot see any addition of water here. But still splitting is happening. Then which one will be the enzyme? We have learned about another enzyme class which is also related to lysis. What is that? It's lyase enzyme. So aldolase will belongs to the class, aldolase belongs to the class, lyase. Okay, so 
you have to ensure that uh, you are remembering every enzyme that you are learning under metabolism part and how this particular enzymes are belonging to different classes of enzymes so ensure that you are having the idea about what to which class of enzyme each enzyme that we are mentioning in metabolism belongs okay so this is the second stage and step four and this one is step five okay ensure that you are learning in this time hope you understood up to this particular point now what you have to do is pause the video revise one more try to remember it what is happening and what are the reactions and all okay so that's about it now let us see the next step you have to ensure that you are pausing the video and trying to revise whatever we have learned so far